everyone i am here with dr nagaraj vice chancellor of kalasingam academy of research and education hello sir so please tell us a few words about you basically i belong to bangalore uh, i started my career as assistant engineer uh, in karnataka power corporation limited uh, this was way back in 1989 and subsequently due to my passion in teaching i moved into uh, teaching i have worked in one of the best uh, engineering colleges in the state of karnataka uh, for a long period i was with the uh, rv college of engineering in various capacities starting from a lecturer up to the professor and director uh, for about 17 years after uh, rvc i was in the oxford group of institutions bangalore for about 7 years Uh, later on i moved on as uh, the director of a state private university uh, dhirubai ambani institute of information and communication technology gandhinagar gujarat this particular uh, institute is treated at par with any iits or anything so this is a very niche institute exclusively dedicated for ict study this is information communication technology a new world uh, for all of us it was there some time but Uh, this particular institute has it as a core uh, engineering subject uh, so there i was there for about 3 years time and then uh, moved on uh, to now presently i am at kalaslingam academy of research and education a state uh, uh, a deemed to be university under utc from the last 2 years Uh, during my tenure as director of Hirubai Ambani Institute of Information Communication Technology, I concurrently held charge as in charge director of Triple IT, uh, what other the Indian Institute of Information Technology. This is again an institution of national importance uh, because uh, Hirubai Ambani Institute was the mentor institute for Triple IT Vadodara. I held the concurrent charge of Triple IT Vadodara as well. as director of that institute and was responsible to uh, build the institute from scratch uh, so this is uh, my brief uh, of what i have been doing for the last uh, 28 29 years of my uh, professional career basically i am a phd from vishweshwara technological university uh, in electrical and electronics engineering and uh, that's it thank you sir thank you so much now moving on to a question sir you have been an educator for a long time please share with us your experience and give us your views on the development scheme in the education sector over the years as i said uh, my passion for education brought me uh, into the education domain and uh, yes uh, the uh, education has taken a paradigm uh, change a paradigm shift from what it used to be some time ago to what it is today uh, basically uh, the learning is same the learning doesn't change the learning is same the core areas remain same the core concepts remain same but the uh, challenges are because india is a large country india is a very large country with huge volume and we have this very very big demographic uh, dividend uh, wherein we, we we have about 30 to 40 crore uh, population of this country who are in this age age uh, group of maybe about 18 to 35 years uh, and uh, basically whatever uh, india has achieved today in terms of uh, its per capita growth in terms of its gdp or in terms of um, the uh, technological uh, jump that india has taken technological leap that india has taken is basically because of the education system that india has put up over a long long period of time yes uh, the uh, gers must improve the gross enrollment ratios must improve uh, we are somewhere around 26 27 now uh, we hope that in the next 5 to 10 years this gr will cross 50 uh, so that that is the time when we we say that we are a developed nation Uh, but uh, keeping that aside on the technological front which is uh, my cup of tea uh, where i have been serving for the last uh, for three decades or so uh, in various capacities i see the way the technological education has been 
uh, offered uh, has has taken a major change. Uh, earlier, it used to be uh, the stress used to be on theoretical learning and stress used to be on building the theories, but now the stress is on more on hands-on skills, more on acquiring skills and giving that uh, acumen of lifelong learning to the students. Um, uh, I keep on telling to my um, uh, students that uh, earlier uh, when people used to graduate in maybe uh, in the uh, uh, 1980s or 90s, um, maybe till the later part of 90s, um, the shelf life of the engineers at that point of time or shelf life of any graduate for that matter at that point of time uh, would be like if once you are employed, you are employed for life. You need not have any additional skills. You need not learn anything uh, uh, beyond whatever you have gained in your three-year or four-year degree system. But uh, times have changed. Now there is a shelf life. Earlier the shelf life may be, if you talk about later part of 90s, the shelf life may be about five to seven years, uh, 10 years also sometimes. But now the shelf life of uh, any graduate is about uh, six months to eight months or come down to uh, less than a year. So what does that mean? This means that uh, the uh, type of training, uh, the type of uh, skills that the students uh, gain over a period uh, after their graduation is what becomes very, very important for them to be employed and continue their employment. So uh, the uh, strength in them, putting that uh, urge in them uh, that they should keep updating themselves. They must be learning a lot parallelly while they are on jobs is very, very important. And that is what all of us are supposed to uh, build in the uh, quality or building the uh, cap capability in the students and make them understand the importance of lifelong learning and inculcate in them the habit of reading. Very, very important. Inculcate in them the habit of reading, reading beyond what they study. Another important thing, once they do this, once they read beyond what they actually study as curriculum or syllabus of their course, uh, it really helps them because it not only, um, you know, uh, enlarges their uh, knowledge base, enlarges their uh, understanding of the uh, core area, but also helps them in, you know, uh, getting to know uh, what what is that the industry needs uh, presently. What is that the society needs presently? And moreover, uh, more of the problems these days, like whatever uh, uh, engineering problems uh, which come up, it could be science problems or it could be any any sort of problems which are coming up, are more uh, linked to the society and the way uh, and whatever is needed for the society is what is being built. So uh, the uh, a uh, graduate who is coming out now must be, you know, uh, closer to the society as well, uh, to whatever extent possible and trying and understanding the needs of the society and thereby trying to think of what, what, what new can be brought in or what changes that can be brought in in the existing technology so that the uh, technology becomes useful to the society. Uh, it could be any, any aspect, you know, uh, right from the food production, the in enhancement of industrial output, or it could be, uh, you know, contributing to the uh, income of uh, the, uh, you know, the the down, downtrodden or the labor class. Uh, how 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 uh, these technologies can make a change in the lives of the masses is what we are uh, looking towards now uh, as a. So there has been a major shift from what it used to be uh, an engineer or whatever it, uh, whosoever is a professional graduate uh, he, at some point of time they used to think once you get a graduation you are employed for life that scenario has changed so based on the change in that scenario quite obviously the education system has also made a very big uh, it has to adapt to the change and you know thereby uh, we try to train our students uh, uh, for uh, not as just an employer in a state or, or maybe uh, an uh, a employee uh, in any part of the country, but we, we want to train the students as global employees, anyway, wherever they go, go in the world. So they should be able to survive with what they learn 
over their three year or four year period here um, and then you know take it forward uh, to whichever country they are in and uh, whatever position they are in and try to excel in those thank you sir. thank you so much now moving on to the next uh, question so you have been a part of various educational organizations please tell us how the approach towards education varies from institution to institution uh, uh i see uh, all education institutions are uh, uh, built on the same principles of educating the masses i again bring back the concept of you know india a vast country and uh, education being the state subject and in particular uh, the education offered by the private institutions self financed and self financed institutions are are you know are complementing the state uh, you know state uh, institutions in a big big way uh, but for the existence or uh, but for the privatization in the education sector our country wouldn't have been what it is today so that is one major observation that i would like to uh, bring out here the other part is uh, like you know uh, each educational institutions ha- may have its own unique way of functioning uh, for example uh, uh, you know uh, the earlier part as i said uh, and they also change like uh, depending on the uh, scenarios the way they function the education institutions function also changes for me as administrator because for the last uh, 17 to 18 years i have been a, a, an administrator in my about uh, 30 years uh, of career uh, i see uh, the autonomy part as a very important component for any country any educational institution may be state uh, sponsored or private sponsored the administrator must have the ultimate autonomy in terms of what he or she intends to do and and it is very good if the people uh, whosoever are the sponsoring bodies it could be the state or the uh, private organization very clearly define the roles and responsibilities of the administrator and tell him or her uh, their expectations from uh, that particular role so once that is clearly defined i feel uh, autonomy plays a very important role and the onus lies on the individual the onus lies on the uh, person to how he would define a path for himself or herself in moving forward uh, it is like this uh, uh, you you are appointed over a period of time you are appointed for a term and you are given uh, something called as your short term and long term goals and uh, once that is defined the uh, uh, person must be given complete autonomy in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, allowing him or her to implement those short and long term goals because there is a vision any any anybody any uh, uh, institute will work over a vision so based on the vision uh, we would have drawn out uh, certain short and long term objectives uh, drawn out of that vision and for the short term and long term objectives if people are given uh, enough autonomy enough independence uh, in in making it uh, roll uh, forward uh, that that i think is a major thing and i am very fortunate i should tell rahul is that uh, wherever i have been uh, all my managements have been very very uh, you know uh, conducive and responsible in terms of giving utmost autonomy uh, to me in what whatever i intended to do because uh, they all worked on a few principle uh, the principle the only principle and only motto was excellence so once we say that uh, we uh, we what we look from an individual is excelling in what was already there so taking it to the next level and that level is already prescribed and uh, the job becomes very easy uh, for an individual like me because i know where i stand now and where i would like to go next and i have a path which i have uh, uh, you know put to put it put in for myself i have put a, a short term path what i would intend to do in the next two years or one year time and then i would uh, leap over and i would write uh, what i would really intend to do in the next four five years time and thereby you know uh, trying to meet uh, the uh, uh, the aspiration of uh, whosoever it is concerned maybe see uh, any vision from any uh, educational institution 
is uh, drawn out from the vision of the stakeholders i see uh, uh, the students parents employers the job givers uh, the society uh, everybody as as the as part of of this this major uh, institution called as the educational institution and we would definitely take uh, inputs from all this uh, uh, you know uh, entities and then try to put it in one and then to build your own vision and then probably you know you try to scale up you try to excel in doing whatever you want so my mantra for excelling uh, in whatever uh, i intend to do is give the individual the utmost autonomy define targets define uh, what is the goal and then tell him or her that this is what is the expectation and this is the resources made available to you once these two things are uh, very clearly uh, prescribed then obviously the, the sky should be the limit for the individual i must tell my particular experience with kalaslingam uh, at this point of time uh, the management at kalaslingam has been magnanimous in terms of giving that autonomy to any administrator the last two years that i have been here right from our chancellor to pro chancellor our vice president of uh, each our gem of people because uh, uh, our uh, vice president administration dr shashi anand who is always on the campus around the clock you know uh, uh, the the type of uh, blending that we have both of us have in terms of running this institution i should tell it, it is par excellence uh so because i know what is my role and responsibility and uh, uh, vice president knows in what way he can support me in making this uh, possible and giving the best to our stakeholders best to our students so that way the synergy is built and uh, that has been reflected very well in the uh, recent nirf uh, rankings because kalasalingam university which was in the 100 to 150 bracket in the last year the current year it has crossed that 100 mark and come to 72nd position it is a very big achievement for a university to come up 30 positions i don't know where exactly we stood 100 to 150 is the block but in that block where we actually were hitting in i do not know but i even if i say that i was in the 101st position moving from 101 to 72 is a big 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 jump so the, there and similarly in engineering category we are we are 60th position now last year we were 61 and this time we are 60 we uh, know why we are 60 that is because uh, the competition as you go up uh, you know uh, rises up we have about 30 40 uh, institutes of national import there are iits nits icers we are competing with that that level of institutions and obviously the competition as we uh go up uh, is shall increase that we are aware of and we are trying to put in our own mechanisms our own steps in you know clearly uh excelling in all the uh various criterions that these particular agencies prescribe uh, to uh, go up to certain level uh, it could be uh, teaching learning it could be results it could be research it could be our uh, you know outreach activities it could be the excellence in extra co curricular activities by our students our placements you you name uh, those activities we, we would have said that these are our targets for the uh, next one year to uh, come and this is what we intend to do and as i said in the earlier part of my discussion these are my short term goals i say that in academics i would have a 90% result this year in placements i would in last year i was 91 this time i would make it 93 94 in my research my research output last year my h index was 60 this year i would may like to make my h index as 65 something like that you try to fix your targets and based on that you individually uh, try to you know um, communicate to the uh, final uh, the, the people people who are going to uh, execute it and implement it and also do a regular follow up that is very very important follow up in a large system like ours uh, plays a very important role ask people and make them responsible to their task this is what uh, i have been doing or rather i have been practicing and this is my personal experience about uh, any educational institution i have been in i have not changed many jobs i have this is my uh, in fact my third job uh, right from my career i was in uh rva was in oxford and then went to sorry this is my fourth i went to diasc 
and because of these are all tenure positions we unintendedly we would like we have to change so from dict i have come to uh, thalasalingam any of these four managements that i have worked with any, all of them have been uh, very very exemplary in terms of uh, clearly defining the targets and giving the utmost autonomy uh, to me as an administrator thank you sir now moving on to the next question as the vice chancellor of the institution how do you ensure that the institute is run in an efficient and an effective manner very good question rahul this is in fact uh, the continuation of the previous question and my answer also obviously will be continuation of whatever uh, i was telling um, see for a, anybody who comes in the uh, the vice chancellor is the head of the universe the academic head of the university. and it is quite obvious that the uh, owners uh, the job job prescription for vice chancellor position obviously says that you must uh, excel across the spectrum of the education you have uh, the various verticals as i pointed out in my uh, previous answer uh, that uh, the various verticals obviously a core core vertical is teaching and learning where you are you are principal objective is to teach and train your students and make them one of the best possible graduates we have something called as graduate outcomes for uh, the students defined so when we see that graduate outcomes graduate attributes for a student for a graduate coming out of kalasingam university we would like to uh, keep him at par with uh, a student or a graduate from any any top notch university in the country and maybe uh, in the world Uh, over a period of time so that is the uh, vision that we uh, have uh, you know uh, have for all of us so as i said the fundamental uh, pillar or fundamental vertical uh, for an educational institution is teaching learning and to make teaching and learning efficient and to make students understand the latest concepts and to make students understand and appreciate what could be the new uh, thing which which would follow uh, beyond what they have learned uh, during their four year or three year uh, degree courses the research part the research part becomes very very important because the faculty has to be pursuing active research while teaching that is the uh, requirement of any uh, strong educational institution unless and until the faculty reaches beyond what he or she is teaching and you know um, tries to understand the latest uh, know how that is happening in that particular area of uh, field that they have been working on their teaching becomes monotonous their teaching doesn't become interesting so research is another major component which uh, we definitely would look into one there are there is a very specific uh, these are there are very specific interventions to motivate faculty uh, to take up research active research and encourage them to take up active research so that it is beneficial to the student and also beneficial to the society the third aspect that we obviously would always look into is the placements placements of the students because you have given them the best uh, teaching you have given them the best learning you have made them uh, given them the acumen of something called as lifelong learning a graduate coming out of kalasnikam university has minimum shelf life in the industry when i say shelf life he or she may not require any training beyond what he has learned in the university during his 3 or 4 years stay the, the industry of uh, whichever industry he is employed he or she would straight away can be put on projects that is the confidence uh, with which we try to uh, train our students so give them good placements and then you know bring in a holistic growth of the student in terms of it is not only uh, knowledge education good cgpas good research beyond that also to shape the individual into uh, a human being a, a person with touch towards society you have all other activities spinning around uh, this particular activity or extracurricular activity your co curricular activities it could be your nss it could be your ncc it could be anything for that matter which you know which uh, augments the uh, student strength in 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 multifaceted way uh, so that the graduate uh, produced out of this university is one of the 
uh, um, best uh, graduates. So in that, uh, keeping that in mind, keeping that as target, you would like to frame your policies. Maybe short-term policies can be for a semester, long-term, uh, short-term can be for a semester, a year, long-term policies can be for two years, three years. You would like to try to tell what are those interventions that the university has to do in terms of making your graduates one of the best graduates available across the globe for a specific job. When we try and do that, we think that whatever is the gap in, in learning versus the skill needed by industry, you open up a plethora of you know, uh, training, uh, uh, training uh, uh, avenues to the students. Uh, uh, tell them that these are the additional skills which they can gain while they are on campus so that they become much better at the opportunities, the job opportunities, you know, uh, enlarge, job opportunities enhance once uh, along with the degree, they have multiple uh, additional certifications, additional training. So we, we, we plan right from, you know, scratch, like we, we say this year we have done this, we got these results, you analyze them and make, you, you present it to the board and then we, we propose what we intend to do to scale up next. So uh, as I said, it, it's based on the goals that we define every semester, every year or maybe every couple of years. And uh, based on that, you, you try to uh, uh, tread a path uh, on uh, how you are going to uh, make it possible for the stakeholders. Very well put, sir. Now, talking about Kalaslingam Academy of Research and Education, what are the core strengths and achievements of the institution? Uh, Kalaslingam Academy of Research and Education, I think you know the history of the uh, institution. It started way back in 84. Uh, we are about four, four decades of existence now. Uh, maybe a little less, about four decades of uh, existence now. We became a deemed to be university in 2006. So if you take the period 2006 to 2020, we are a very young university, uh, you know, about 14 years of existence, uh, wherein we may have about 10 to 12 batches passing out of this year. Uh, uh, and if you just look at the achievements of this young university, uh, I, it is mind-blowing. Uh, as I said in my, maybe uh, in your uh, initial uh, answers uh, for the questions, uh, the, the uh, initial answers for the questions, uh, uh, I said that uh, we are we are positioned somewhere in the top 100 institutions in the country. In the top 100, at least there are about 60 to 70 institutions which are state-run institutions. And in that 60 to 70 institutions, there are about 40 institutions which are recognized as institutions of national importance. So when you take this statistics of about 40 institutions of national importance, and about 60 to 65 institutions who are uh, state-run institutions, wherein the state sponsors these institutions. Uh, Kalasalingam uh, having a ranking of about 60 uh, under the engineering category and having a rank of about 70, uh, 72 to be precise under the university category is indeed a, a very, very um, uh, nice achievement uh, to look upon. And this has not happened in one day, Rahul. It is over a period of time. Uh, the vision of uh, our uh, chairman, Thiru Kalasalingamaya, the chancellor, uh, Thiru Sridharan sir, and our vice president, uh, Dr. Shashi Anand and Mr. Arjun Kalasalingam. Uh, all of us look to uh, all these people, uh, whosoever has been at the uh, front uh, leading the institution, have been, you know, uh, uh, their 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 main mantra was uh, excellence, and excellence doesn't come just like that. You you need to do a lot of hard work uh, to put in uh, uh, reach that level. Uh, so all these people, whomsoever uh, the names I have taken, are all 24 hours seven people. They work 24 hours a day. Uh, so that is the expectation from the people who are part of this university as well. So within 16 years going up to a certain excellent level 
is indeed a you know it's it's a very cherishable uh, sort of an achievement so uh, now the path becomes a little more tougher because you have already reached at some level and going further up you know uh, you know the, the gradient is uh, very very tough to climb so with that gradient for probably tightening the belts and putting in strong policies uh, towards all the activities that a university has to take up once we uh, do all that definitely i think the scaling becomes uh, easier so i see kalasingam as one of the very very uh, you know uh, prominent universities in the next 5 years down the line i would i would i would like to see the university uh, within the top 25 rankings of, of whatever may be the yardstick it could be the national rank- ranking and maybe international ranking we could come within the top 500 uh, sort of a position uh, i would i would like to see my institution my university within the top 25 in the next 2 to 3 years down the line thank you sir now cat houses many research centers this tells us that a lot of importance is given to research here what are some of the ways the universe city promotes research among students uh see uh, as i said uh, initially you know uh, teaching learning is one the next is obviously teaching learning becomes efficient and more uh, you know prolific uh, if uh, it is you know complemented with good research so this this has been understood by the university right from the inception because we built in a facility called as international research center for investing more than 40 crores about 7 to 8 or 10 years back uh, which houses state of the art equipment it is not only in terms of space it is a huge space it is a huge space but along with the space you have given the equipment also to pursue research uh, it could be anything it could be an electron microscope to spectrometer to whatever you any the, the uh, a researcher needs Uh, to uh, test his or her uh, product uh, is available in this international research center so this infrastructure apart uh, we have a very very strong uh, research policy uh, for promotion of research amongst the faculty and stakeholders the research promotion policy uh, is is uh, at par with any uh, institute of national importance because we have all the components of uh, a, any good research policy must have it could be in terms of the professional development allowance to faculty it could be in terms of awards to faculty who publish in good journals it could be in terms of giving seed money to the faculty to start their research see the seed money concept is very very unique and very important and this is as i said uh in my experience in the uh, earlier four institutions or three institutions uh this seed money concept uh, was there but not to the extent that i am seeing in uh, the uh, palaslingam academy of research and education the seed money is needed for a young uh, phd who is just joining the institution uh you know he has come from a different uh, back, uh, background and surrounding and he would have dealt with uh, some sort of an equipment some sort of software to pursue his research which may not be available uh, currently in the university so this seed money grant is a scheme where uh, the uh, new recruit uh, can give a proposal uh, to the uh, r&d department tell them that i have done this research and i would like to continue the research on this line to continue my research on these lines i need some equipment some software whatever it could be and give a proposal a financial proposal uh to that extent there is a small committee which uh, you know uh, goes through this proposal and makes a recommendation to the management without a second word the management shall approve the recommendation of the uh, expert committee which is going to look into these proposals so this is a sort of you know a boost uh, mentally as well as in terms of resource for a young uh, faculty who is joining our university to pursue his research and take it forward only when you give him or her that facility in the university he or she will be able to go take it to the next level and probably the dividends that he or she brings in at a later part of time is more important 
the dividend could be in terms of like once he has some uh, results he would publish he would publish it in a good journal using those publications definitely uh, the candidate becomes eligible for applying for research grants in larger research grants through public funding it could be for funding from government agencies or could be funding from non government agencies so uh, this particular scheme of uh, giving uh, you know the starting grant uh, for the faculty is very very important intervention uh, by my university to make the faculty feel proud the other aspect of promoting research is giving them awards whenever they excel in something when the awards in uh, like you know we all measure uh, the research output through in which particular journals or uh, which particular transactions the faculty has been publishing if it is a scopus journal you have a specific money a specific amount given to the faculty to be precise it is about 10000 rupees which is given to a faculty for every scopus paper the faculty publishes if it is an sci publication with an impact factor the amount is 15000 and uh, rahul i should tell you that uh there is no upper limit on these amounts any faculty if he or he could he or she must we cannot tell them that you publish only two you will be given award only for two papers beyond that there shall be no award so that is not there even if he or she is capable of publishing good quality papers it could be 5 10 i don't know about whatever could be the number so they could i i have seen instances in last year where one single faculty uh, getting about 2 2 2 plus lakhs as a uh, award uh, for publishing in good journals and transactions so that is another boost which is given to the research so this is the faculty aspect not only faculty even to students there is there is a similar uh, sort of an environment to the students right from the undergraduate master students and phd students we 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 try to boost their uh, morale by you know those such interventions like some Suppose they need something, some financial assistance. See, financial assistance is one major component of any research. Unless and until that is done, people uh, don't, you know, the uh, unless until that encouragement is there, uh, uh, the uh, level of research will will not go up. So that that has been understood by the uh, top management of uh, my university. And wherever it is needed, in, maybe in terms of uh, registration fee for a conference, maybe in terms of uh, registration fee for a workshop. giving them those holidays like you know it could be a seven day workshop it could be a 15 day workshop it could be a three day workshop it could be a three day conference and also travel grant if the conferences are held abroad uh, give them or uh, you know reimburse their travel uh, fees also so these are all the various you know um, uh, support uh, systems that has been developed in the university for all the stakeholders the students for the undergrad masters pg phd students and also to the faculty of the university due, due to this uh, i have seen a, a big jump in terms of the h index h index of the university i think you you are very well aware shows uh, the percentage of citations the university has earned over a period of time and um, uh, it was somewhere around 50 uh, last year 52 55 it went on making those changes and currently we stand at a h index of 62 which is at par with any any top level institution in this country so uh, this was possible only because of uh, such value added interventions uh, in terms of this uh, seed grant in terms of research promotion in terms of awards for publication and you know in terms of sponsoring the faculty to attend conferences workshops seminars so uh, i think we have everything in terms of making the research uh, very very uh important component of anybody in this thank you sir thank you so much for your time and also for your wise words thank you so much